oh yeah, I totally get that Pox isn't playable in Legacy. No, that's totally... Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka 3 Been you here for another Legacy video, and today we are going to be messing around with my good friend Smallpox. Uh, Evan sent us a Golgari Pox deck to play on the channel today, and you might look at this card and think, this isn't a good card. Well, I mean, you're not exactly wrong, but we're going to try to make it a little bit less symmetrical. The innate problem with this card that we are going to have to work through is that this says each player. Each player loses a life, discards a card, sacrifices a creature, and sacrifices a land. So in terms of output, this is a lot on one card. And if we are not sacrificing all of these card types, and our opponent is, that's a win for us. Or if we don't care about sacrificing some of these types, that is a win for us as well. Historically, Pox has been a deck that has been base mono black and a lot of times ends up splashing green because of the power of Life from the Loam specifically. Life from the Loam makes it so you don't really care about sacrificing your lands and you probably don't care about discarding cards either. Like you discard some lands, you get them back with Life from the Loam, you get back the lands that you sacrificed in the first place, and you kind of drag the game on and hope that your opponent's plan grinds to a halt. Now, there's a couple of problems with Pox decks in Legacy right now. Number one is efficiency of threats. The cards in Pox haven't really gotten better over time. It's picked up some small tools, something like Urza Saga is great, but cards like Murktide Regent or Seasoned Dungeoneer that can quickly and single-handedly win the game on their own present a major problem for this deck. Um, when, you know, people were attacking with tutus a lot of the times, like, Pox was a much more viable strategy. Everything died to curse scroll. You had time to dig your way out. Now, a lot of times in the mid to late game, a card like Murktide Regent will kill you in two shots, and you don't have a lot of time if you don't already have an onboard answer. Problem number two with the deck is actually this card, and you might, like, be raising an eyebrow for why, like, we're not a cantrip deck, we're not a small creature deck, but... We are an Edict deck. So one of the premier control cards in Pox has been Liliana of the Veil vale for a very long time. And like, let's just take a look at how this lines up versus Orcish Bowmasters. Your opponent has a good creature on board. They cast Bowmasters. Well, now there's two layers of protection for that good creature. Or, you know, they just have a Bowmasters on board already. You Edict away the Orc token. The Bowmasters attacks you for your remaining point of loyalty. Or your opponent has a good creature on the board, you minus, edict it, they play Bowmasters, Liliana has one loyalty left, you ping Liliana, and that's just that. So we can kind of see the just crazy utility and range of what Orcish Bowmasters is capable of doing in Legacy, even in the decks where it's not really designed to go and do specific things against it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the deck list that we're going to be playing today. Now, today's video is sponsored by both Cool Stuff Inc. and Moxfield.com. If you find yourself needing some paper cards, promo code 3BNU will save you 5% on your order at Cool Stuff Inc. All right, so this is the deck list that we're going to be playing today. In terms of a proactive game plan, um, ignore that part. We don't really have that. Uh, we have some discard to kind of stop our opponent's things from coming down, but we're largely going to be on a reactive game plan, seeking to use cards like Smallpox and Sudden Edict to clear the board, and then spiral the game out of the control, out of control with something like a Grist or a Liliana. We don't actually have that many ways to win, thus is the life of being a Pox player, and so we're maybe going to ultimately win with a whole bunch of small tokens off something like Grist or Retrofitter Foundry, but our primary win condition is going to be playing Urza Saga again and again via Life from the Loam. Like, that is how we plan on taking down a control deck. Um, we are going to try out the One Ring today. I'm a little worried. We don't have that much life gain in this deck. We have a Shadow Spear. Shadow Spear plus Urza Saga is a wonderful way to gain some life. Uh, but you'll notice that I'm not maxing out on four copies of this thing. Um, this is fine. This is going to be kind of our Phyrexian Arena, and maybe it will give us time versus some larger threats like Murktide Regent. Um, 
but we don't have some things like exploration in this deck list. I just don't think there's really room for it to really pop off after the one ring. We don't have bonus Lotus Petals, we just have Mox Diamonds. We'll see how this ends up performing. Evan sent me a last minute email asking me to slot in one or two of these, so we'll see how it feels. As far as the sideboard goes, I've essentially paired these up into two columns. We have the hate for the unfair decks and the additional removal for the fair decks. Note that since I am trying the one ring which cares about my life total, I'm going to try Bantu's Last Reckoning today over Toxic Deluge, which is traditionally played in these slots. This is also just something that can help me clear out Orcish Bowmasters and friends all at once. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and hop into the leagues here. And if you haven't heard, I have some wonderful t-shirts available on Bonfire. Uh, check out the video description if you want the links to that and your very own Thraben U merch. All right, let's battle. All right, for round one, we are playing against a Yorian deck of some kind. I will be keeping my hand. We have kind of turn one life from the loam as a thing I can do. Or turn one him to Turok, um, which I think I am more interested in. Just kind of in the dark here. The Yorian deck probably doesn't play Stifle. So let's go ahead and just fetch and put an extra land into the graveyard for a little bit later. Grab a Bayou. Discard the Bosaju, I think. That way I still have black black in case I get wastelanded or eat a prismatic ending or something. <laughs> I've got an arrow in the yard, okay. We'll see how important taking that island was relatively quickly, I assume. Probably not, based on what I'm seeing here. Go ahead and loam back a couple of lands. I don't care if this gets dazed, so I'm not going to play out a land ahead of time. Okay, it's in hand. I am going to immediately fetch, just keep lands in the graveyard, because I'm going to be dredging life from the loam. And we'll just drop a Retrofitter Foundry into play. This is probably incredibly inefficient as a win condition against this opponent, if I were to guess. Deffolid Coliseum. Uh, we're looking for Urza Saga and Wasteland here. Negative? I think um, both Sejoing my opponent's lands doesn't really make a lot of sense here. Probably makes their mana better. Alright. I guess we're just kind of having an unexciting draw one turn. And then I'll hold... Nope. Clicked wrong. And then I'll hold up a Retrofitter Foundry activation for end of turn. Cephalid Coliseum on the other side of the board is a little bit funky. May mean my opponent has a Life from the Loam package in their deck. Um, maybe with like Field of the Dead nonsense. If my opponent fetches another non-basic here, I might just Bosage you them. The issue is that like casting cards... Uh, sure, that's fine. I'll sudden edict that to use my mana. It is slightly awkward to sudden edict that because I'm putting my opponent to more cards in graveyard for the purposes of Uro. So there's an argument to just make some tokens and deal with this a couple turns down the line. Because, like, Fetchland can produce Uro right now. Uh, Baleful Strix is fine. Um, but I need to find something meaningful off Life from the Loam. Dredge. Uh, wasteland is great. So let's go ahead and attempt to snag that Wasteland that I just found. It's very good if it resolves. It does. Go ahead and Wasteland Tropical Island. Yeah, you may float mana all you like. And then it's possible at this point that I just start further attacking lands. But not bad lands. Like, I want this in play. This doesn't contribute to Uro. I'm going to do that. I'm not 100% sure if it's correct to. It feels like my opponent is a lose to Blood Moon sort of deck, so I'm probably going to end up treating a Ghost Quarter as a Wasteland in future games. Stack Faden. Uh, I'm not great at pressuring that. I can blow up the artifacts my opponent takes. So that's not that big of a deal. Uh, we'll keep Loman for now. Wasteland, Boseju, Ghost Quarter. 
going to go ahead and wasteland and continue to attack my opponent's blue mana. And that's good enough for now. Throw over the burn willows as well. Uh, Hall Breacher Dak Faden is legitimately annoying. Yep. That targets me, so I don't get to do anything sexy here. I just discard some lands. I'm not very good at answering planeswalkers. Like, the creatures are okay. I can deal with those eventually. I think I have to nuke the Strix now so that an Edict can kill a Hull Breacher. Does this work? This works, right? I can dredge life from the loam and then discard two cards. Like, discard Misty and Ghost Quarter here. Mm. Well, treasure Token's actually a problem. It potentially allows Uro to get into play. I missed on my real draw. Wasteland, Boseju, Ghost Quarter. Yeah. Blue, blue, green, green. I can't really stop Uro at this point. My opponent also is a Yorian deck. I probably can't run them out of basics. But that's not like super the angle of attack that I should be taking. I can't stop the Uro. Then instead, I should just blow up Retrofitter Foundry to keep my opponent from insulating it with additional tokens. And unfortunately, they are going to make a token here. It comes at the cost of their treasure, but that shouldn't matter as they end up getting a bonus land. All right. I'll replace with life from the loam. I'll replace with life from the loam. Um, that was pretty good. I still haven't hit an Urza Saga in half my deck. I'll discard two copies. Maybe discard one copy of life from the loam. Keep one in hand. I've got three total now. That actually keeps my opponent from casting Uro. All right. So life from the loam. Life from the loam. Discard, Loam, Loam, Oseju. I might get milled out by Doc Vaden, Hull Breacher. I have finally hit an Urza Saga. I'm just taking a natural draw here. I'm going to get back a Wasteland and two copies of Urza Saga. I don't really know how I win the game. Like, it's very easy for me to continue to not lose the game. Like, this has high enough loyalty that it's a problem. The opponent has chump blockers. I guess it's Pithing Needle on Dak Faden a few turns from now. I guess I walk down this path. But I'm really at the mercy of my opponent. Okay, Lightning Bolt to my face. Um, what I'm doing probably isn't fast enough anymore. Also, if I dredge three times to avoid giving them Hull Breacher tokens, I have a good chance at milling over. Okay, they're just going to take my Mox Diamond. That's fine. Yeah, so I take four. And I take five. It's not a dredge. I can tell you that much. Innocent Blood doesn't do a ton here. Like, I'll cast it. It is correct for me to do so. Blue... Blue, green, green. I can't stop that via Wasteland. I can maybe stop it via Ghost Quarter. Go after Forest here. Uh, unfortunate. Okay, I think I concede to my opponent putting Uro in here in play here. Blue, blue, green, green. Close to milling myself out. I'm also just essentially dead on board in the next turn. Um, that's fine. My opponent's kind of attacking from... You know what? Honestly, I think if I find an Urza Saga in the first 20 or so cards, that game goes fine. I just didn't. I'm not great at dealing with Planeswalkers outside of Pithing Needle. Abrupt Decay and Assassin's Trophy help. So do Shouldred's Edict, which I'll probably swap for maybe Innocent Blood over Sudden Edict. I care about my own creatures a lot in the times where I do actually get them. What don't I want? The discard's pretty medium as this game goes long, but I might need it to stop an early Planeswalker from hitting. I probably shouldn't 
freak out too much about Dak Faden. Like, my opponent is a Yorian deck. How many Daks do they realistically run? The answer is probably one, maybe two. Uh, yes, this is fine. So we'll just slam a Currency Converter and pass, and Currency Converter is another way to make Smallpox less symmetrical. I'm unsure if I Smallpox or him first. I think I just attempt the immediate land destruction. Oh, maybe that's not true. Like, maybe I try to him some lands, and before they get to three mana, I cast the Smallpox. Just, like, have a chance to bait a Force of Will or otherwise just take some lands out of their hands. Okay, this is fine. Uh, this is the land that I would like to sacrifice. Go ahead and play that. Loading a mana. And cast Smallpox. Discard Bayou. I'll sacrifice Boseju. And I'll go ahead and put that Bayou under Currency Converter. And I'll convert that to a treasure token on my opponent's turn. The next turn I get to play Urza Saga and Grist. Sure. This is a little annoying in terms of like random discard because my opponent gets to rebuy that card. But like, I turned my land into a treasure token and that didn't even require me to tap any mana. Alright, Saga. Do a Grist. Ooh, that is annoying. That was the biggest piece of gas my hand had. Like, Urza Saga isn't bad, but the Grist Plussing was supposed to dig me towards a Life from the Loam. Now that doesn't get to happen anymore. All right. Something like an Uro coming down would undo a lot of the good. Oh, it's just Yorian to hand. That's totally fine. Unfortunately, had a bit of a dead draw here. Um, I will go ahead and just play a land and pass. Slightly longer term, I can use Urza Saga. Or sorry, not Urza Saga. Currency Converter in a meaningful way to grow these Urza Saga tokens. But right now, it's outside of Punishing Fire range. This quarter is not the best draw here. Alright, we've gotten some action. This is probably just my opponent fetching so they don't get Pithing Needled. Um, I don't... I can use a treasure to make a treasure, but that's not going to do what I need it to do here. Alright, so I've got a 3-3 three, three that is about to become a 4-4. Four, four. I think I'm interested in Retrofitter Foundry. We're trying to kind of go wide at the moment. I don't know that attacking this really matters right now. I'll still put this land into play, though. I'll grab a Bayou, pass the turn. There's a couple of things that I need to think about. I need to think about Edicts. I need to think about a whole Breacher response uh, to a Currency Converter activation. The Green Sun, I guess. Oh, it's straight up just a hardcast Yorian. That's fine. So the Yorian trigger basically does nothing. Uh, I think I'm going to draw and discard rather than make a 1-1 one -one here. I'll discard a Verdant Catacombs. That'll end up growing my Construct token a little bit later. Go ahead and Wasteland. Get rid of the Grove. I think I tap this to turn this into a 5-5. Five five. Go ahead and crash in with my 5-5, five five, which can now safely attack in. After no blocks, we'll turn it into 6 damage. I don't think I need to Ghost Quarter anything right now. My opponent has showed us basics. Um, Ooze doesn't have that many creatures to eat. Oh, okay, getting the hits in. That's fair. I am at 14. Hitting a lot of land. I go ahead and tap like this. Nice. Perfectly happy with that. My opponent can eat this card with Ooze if they like. But I don't necessarily think that's the route that they're going to go. Go ahead and play this. Bash in with my construct. After no blocks. Turn that into a slightly higher amount of damage. This puts my opponent to three. They can eat the Grist in my graveyard, which is a creature. In that zone, anyway. Alright, they've got... They've got mana. Uh, yep. 
I'm down to 10. The scavenging ooze is probably in chump block mode now, as the construct token is lethal, meaning the servo tokens can reasonably attack. We'll go ahead and send on in. Uh, yep, this is fine. My opponent is at 2. I don't think I play this. I think I just passed the turn holding up all the various things that I have available, but it's possible I'm supposed to play this. I'm in fact going to do that. I have multiple mana sinks on board. Uh, sure, that's fine. Okay, we've got a concession there. Um, yeah, so the plan is actually draw Urza Saga, be able to play reasonable magic. Understood. On the draw, I might want Bantu's Last Reckoning. I'm going to do that over Thoughtseize, I think. Like, conceptually, I'm not really excited about playing Board Wipes versus my opponent's deck, but I might just need... Uh, that's a weird hand that I'm going to keep. Daggers. No shuffle with the Ponder. I'm going to just play this as my land drop and not play out Mox Diamond yet. It means that I'm not holding up Sudden Edict in this turn, but it also means that I don't just expose Mox Diamond to a random piece of removal. Although I guess with my opponent starting with Island, it's pretty tough for Mox Diamond to just die. Alright, so I am punished for my choice pretty heavily with that draw, actually. I'll Mox Diamond, discard a Wasteland, and play a Wasteland in case Surgical Extraction gets involved. Don't immediately eat a 3-for-1. Yeah, but in choosing to have flexibility, I missed out on being able to cast Life from the Loam this turn. I would prefer to never play Urborg this game, as it turns these into dual lands. Um, in that case, I should have discarded that to Mox Diamond. It probably doesn't matter, because I probably end up getting the Wasteland back anyway. Or sorry, the... yeah. That's fine. I will almost certainly end up just wastelanding Volcanic Island. But I'm going to wait for my own turn to make that decision. Uh, yep, I am into that. I haven't seen days from my opponent yet. Um, in case they have Surgical Extraction, I should play this Wasteland. I'm going to play one anyway. Yeah, my opponent already did show me Surgical. Attempt my draw to. Force of Negation specifically is annoying. You have to play the One Ring next turn. And then use that to find Urza Saga. Alright. I've got a plan, and this will be the point where we see if the One Ring is actually a good thing to be doing in this shell. Alright, it's in play. I'm going to draw a lot of cards, and I'm going to do this before my opponent has possible Hole Breacher mana. Liliana of the Veil is a good way to pinch my opponent. So the big thing I need to do is not die to my own copy of the One Ring. Life from the Loam. That's annoying. Like, that's very good against both my Wasteland plan and my Liliana plan. Um, yeah. One, two, three, four, five total mana. I do not have... Black, 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 without playing Urborg, unfortunately. Which turns these into dual lands, as we've already talked about. Alright. Let's start on the Hymn. The Volk is gone. I think it is correct to play this, but... This is not really the way that I want it to go with this hand. I'll go ahead and plus this. I will find more lands. Alright, so... I have small creatures covered. Okay. They have a lot of things they can do off life from the loam. They spend their time loaming, though, and not dealing with my permanents. Hopefully that favors me. I do need to find an Urza Saga or a Grist, like something that actually pressures my opponent in some capacity. Otherwise, this Lily just doesn't end up being good enough. Time is also starting to become a concern. Not a concern yet, but... We're getting there. Uh, there's a life from the loam of my own. Wasteland, Wasteland, Swamp. I will continue to Wasteland my opponent. Are we plussing? I think I'm plussing, just discarding some land. They'll do the same. 
then I make a new land drop. Oh, maybe I don't actually cast this. Maybe I hold up Sudden Edict and Wasteland of my own. Ooh. Sure. It's very good here. I'm punished for not casting the second life from the loam to return that last Wasteland of my hand. At some point, I need to stop drawing cards with the One Ring. Or alternatively, find the other copy of the One Ring to reset it. Yep. But I don't think we're quite there yet. I think I take one more set of draws. Like, finding the Urza Saga is so important. Ah, uh, Smallpox is not bad. That gets rid of one of the basics, at least for now. I'll discard uh, an extra Urborg. I guess I should sacrifice this Urborg that's in play as well. I will make a land drop, play a Grist, plus a Grist, plus a Liliana, discard some land. I'm going to preemptively Pithing Needle Dak Faden so that my opponent can't steal Urza Saga Construct Tokens, which is the way that I can win this game before the One Ring kills me. I can also Liliana Ultimate target myself to get rid of the One Ring, uh, which I currently am planning on doing with my turn after I draw five cards with it, uh, if I don't find something else to do. Uh, yep, here we go. Uh, fantastic. So Grist plus... Liliana, target myself. Okay. Choose a pile to sacrifice. I choose pile two, which is cool. There's a saga. Go ahead and make some extra land drops here, because otherwise I am just sacrificing them. Yeah. Fine with a smallpox. I'm fine with a smallpox. I'll discard Bantu's Last Reckoning. Junk an insect token that can't attack. Junk some random land. Black. Black. One. Lily. I think Lily just sits there as an edict. I don't think I need to Lily plus here. The cards are perfectly reasonable. Alright, we found a way to get rid of the one ring and not die to it. That was really dope. Okay, cling to dust is now in their graveyard. That's just something I'm going to have to keep in mind. That is a waste landable land. Okay, sure. So life from the loam goes back. That's all fine. Sure. A shadow Spear is great. I am in Grist Ultimate range. I don't think that's something that super matters, though. All right. Play Shadow Spear. Equip Shadow Spear. Go to combat. Swing in for some damage. You're punishing fire triggers, comically. I have a little literal zero creatures in my graveyard. Uh, Strix is fine. I have that covered a bunch of different ways. Uh, I probably should have wastelanded Volcanic Island in response to that trigger. Um, that's annoying. But happens. I'll make my token. I'll activate an Urza Saga. I don't have a Tormat's Crypt to find, unfortunately. Pick up a Retrofitter Foundry. Uh, minus Liliana, get the Baleful Strix out of the way. <sighs> Wastelanding my opponent is cool. But I maybe just want these Construct Tokens outside of range of Lightning Bolt. Like, I don't think this game is about Mana Denial anymore. Like, I could end up being wrong in that regard, but it seems like I'm just trying to kill my opponent over the next two combat steps. Okay, Minskin Boo's cool. Oh, that is... Oh, okay, they're going to one damage a Construct so they can Lightning Bolt a Construct. Uh, I believe they are still dead on board, though, if they do that. Yep. I activate Retrofitter Foundry for the final point of power necessary to kill my opponent. Yeah. Right. Attack you for lethal. Okay. GG's. <laughs> that was one round, folks. Oh boy. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, which is where I keep all of my deck lists online, and I actually want to show off a feature they made specifically for me, because their team is small and responsive. 
On the settings and decks tab, you can actually click ignore card flavor names to shut off displaying new names for cards like Balaam's Tomb instead of Ancient Tomb. So if those sorts of things are annoying you online, here's how you shut it off. All right, I've got a little bit of a clunker here in terms of a hand. Um, it has some problems. We'll see if I can find a way to victory despite that. Uh, unfortunately, my opponent's hand has two different threats here. Does not have a lot of mana. I'm in fact probably going to smallpox away some of their mana. I'm tempted to take Manifold Key, but I am going to die to the One Ring incredibly quickly if that does get into play, so I think I am going to take that. But I think Manifold Key might be correct some portion of the time. It just keeps my opponent from getting an artifact into play on turn one. Um, can I ever just play Liliana of the Veil vale this turn? I think no, I think I have to go after that land. I don't think I risk drawing a land next turn. Let's discard Saga. I'll leave myself with a basic swamp in play, I think. Cast the smallpox. I think I keep the one ring over Lily. I don't know, maybe I just need to keep chipping away at my opponent's hand, though. Like, the one ring wins me this game harder than Lily does in a lot of instances, but Lily makes it less likely that something like Karn ends up slipping into play later. Like, my issue is that my opponent is going to have so many good top decks. So, for example, if they top decked a Grim Monolith, my decision to not take Manifold Key early gets punished. Okay, that's fine. Alright, I drew a land. Which is the reason to keep Lily over the One Ring, obviously. And now we hope that this game proceeds in a way that I can end up getting this Karn out of my opponent's hand. They're going to discard this defense grid right now. Oh, I'm wrong. Okay. So my opponent is going to pad their hand by not playing cards trying to protect the Karn. All right, now defense grid goes. Uh, I'm going to be lazy and just fetch a Bayou out of my deck. I don't want to draw additional lands. We are hoping to dodge Soul Land, Urza Saga, and Grim Monolith. F. All right, uh, we will continue to plus Liliana, uh, which is not going to be great versus the onboard Urza Saga, unfortunately. All right, Karn is gone. We've at least proceeded to the point of the game where Karn is not going to come down and shut off some of my mana. But end of turn, Urza Saga. Probably kills Lily or very close to it. Or just can pithing needle Lily awkwardly. I might need to just minus six Lily targeting my opponent and just take that amount of value. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. So let's destroy Urza Saga. I assume my opponent is not going to have a Wastes. I think they were supposed to activate it in response, because now I get to just plus Lily this turn, whereas I would have had to minus to get rid of a Construct token. Yeah, I think that was a pretty big mistake. So I'm very happy to get game one versus this deck, because I think my opponent's deck is going to absolutely beat the crap out of me. Like, they're just so much faster than I am. Him to Turok seems slow on the draw. I think the way that I win is just cutting my opponent off on mana most of the time and recurring like Wastelands via Life from the Loam. I have to hedge against Urza Saga just beating me. I don't think I need Currency Converter. On the draw, I'm probably going to get rid of Thought Seizes. My opponent can vomit stuff pretty easily. I think I actually play Mindbreak Trap and some degree of additional creature-based interaction is probably fine. This is 58. Inquisition misses the four drops. I'm probably going to fill the deck with Currency Converter or Thoughtseize. Let's fill with Thoughtseize. I have a Wasteland and a Boseju. Some Urza Sagas, which can find Pithy Needles. I do not have a Life from the Loom, which I very much would like in this matchup. I hope this is fine. I think the game where I'm on the draw is just so hard, though. So I think this first turn, I Mox Diamond, discard an Urza Saga, play a Wasteland, 
and just treat Boseju as a land destruction spell. A little awkward doing that because I don't have the mana to just easily play Grist. But I'm hoping to drag this game on anyway. Like, I am probably wastelanding. Alright, well, my deck is awesome. GG's. Okay, um, I have kind of a medium caliber hand here. I'm going to just lead on basic swamp and currency converter. All right, we are against a flooded strand deck. I immediately did not eat prismatic ending on this. I think I'm just going to try to figure out what deck my opponent is playing this turn. Oh, uh, understood. We are playing against Stoneblade. The batter skull is the thing that physically kills me, but my opponent's very far away from that. I'm just going to take the back to basics, I think. And call it a turn. Oh man, did my opponent just spike Stoneforge Mystic? God damn it. Such fucking daggers for me. Yeah, and my opponent now has Force of Will to back up this Stoneforge. Playing out Grist is no longer good because Cauldra Haste sucks for me. Alright. I think this just has to be a loot, unfortunately. I don't have a creature to just sacrifice to kill that Stoneforge. Uh, discard life from the loam. We'll say yes to this. I don't think I get to ghost quarter this plains and like my opponent just does not have a second basic land in their back to basics deck. I don't think that's realistic. So uh, we'll play a Misty and pass. I'm going to need double edicts to clear Stoneforge Mystic and then Cauldra, and like, let's not talk about the Batter Skull that's coming afterwards. I'm going to do a lazy fetch here. I'll eat my five points of damage. Land is not what I need. I take six, go to five, I play an Edict, Stoneforge dies, this hits me, Force of Will is still involved. I'm going to concede before I show my opponent more cards. <clears throat> Okay, um, so we are playing against Stoneblade here. Things that answer Stoneforge Mystic are going to be good. Probably means both of those. Don't know that I'm interested in Bantus. I'll think about Inquisition. The way that I win this is stop or beat an early Stoneforge and then obliterate my opponent's resources. I think on the play I want Inquisition. I don't know that him is consistent enough for what I want to be doing here. This game is going to go on for a while. I could board down a land. I'm not going to ghost quarter out all of my opponent's basics. I don't know what the last card is. Maybe I don't play the Inquisition after all. Um, this hand is fine as long as Life from the Loam resolves. It's maybe not ideal, but it's fine. I think I start on Mox Diamond. Discard the Urza Saga. Use that to cast Thought Seas. And pave the way for things going well this game. I will take that Prismatic Ending. Um, yeah. And my opponent's gonna die to Urza Saga in short order. They kept a very land-heavy hand against, you know, a Pox deck. That is not going to go well. Alright, so I do this. I play Urza Saga, and Urza Saga probably buries my opponent over time. I'll take natural draws rather than uh, dredging here. Uh, yep, this is all fine. Okay, there we go. Well, that's annoying. Um, frustrating. They don't win the game with a single Urza Saga construct token. I have one of my Bosages in play already. Alright. Do I dredge looking for Boseju? I don't think so. I think I draw because I can find like Assassin's Trophies and Abrupt Decays and stuff. I'll float some mana. I don't have a land in hand for a Mox Diamond, super unfortunately. Becomes a currency converter situation then. Go ahead and loot. Don't dredge. Nice. I'll discard an Innocent Blood. I'll get to make my land drop. And next turn, I can probably dredge Life from the Loam now. I think that's fine. 
Ritual Life from the Loam with three targets, unfortunately all non-basics. All right, they're in play. I think I get an Urza Saga ticking now. I have some cute lines involving wastelanding my own Boseju to get back to basics out of play that I might end up taking a little bit later on. I don't think I'm there yet. Let's drudge with life from the loam. Gotta find a fetch land. Failed to find a fetch land. A mox diamond next turn is very good for me though. I'm not super sweating it here. All right, my opponent goes to 16. I'll drop a land and call that good. This is a weird looking game of magic. This feels worth it to me. So I'll sack that Urza Saga. Find a Mox Diamond. Discard a Wasteland to get mana. Yes to that. Activate that. Throw the Construct token further. I have four mana available. I think I just go ahead and ship in for damage right now. Opponent has Hardcast Force of Will available as a thing that they can do. And I just probably loam. Like, Lily's fine, but... One, two, three. This just feels solid to me. Uh, play a new Urza Saga to get that going. Pass the turn. Have an Edict available if I need it. Stoneforge resolves. The equipment they get will be hard castable. Well, Batter Skull would be. Cauldra's not too far off. Okay, sure. Um, quick think here. Do I want to Sudden Edict on my opponent's turn? This mana, this mana, this mana is spoken for for Urza Saga activation. I don't have to do it now. I don't want to loam right now. A lot of Liliana of the Veil. I think I play Wasteland. Wasteland my opponent's Underground Sea. Sudden Edict Stoneforge out of the way. Hit my opponent for 7. Bringing them to 2. And I've got a number of ways to deal with the Batter Skull. Like, I have to deal with Batter Skull plus Force of Will. I don't th super think that's going to be an issue. Like, my opponent is functionally at 6 life with four gained from the Batter Skull, and the Construct tokens are still fine against that. Uh, yep. So we end of turn, shrink to a 4-4, go back to a 5-5. I don't dredge, I don't think. Got a land drop that I want to make this turn already. Go ahead and sacrifice this. Grab a Shadow Spear. Shadow Spear equipped to one of these. I think just shipping in with both of these is fine. My opponent's source of plowshares, this blocks this. They go to two. Right, they didn't have it. All right, cool. My opponent kind of kept a do nothing hand and just let me be the only one who really took game actions all game. I don't think I am making any changes for post sideboard games here. I am. Fine with keeping this specifically because it addresses an early Stoneforge Mystic, which is the easiest way that I lose the game in the early game. The Wastelands are kind of whatever. Urza Saga is actively good. I always want this to be a basic swamp, I think. And this card doesn't really do anything. All right, am I eating turn two Stoneforge? I am. So then the next question becomes, does my opponent have Force of Will back up? Trailblazer's Torch. Interesting. Um, I am not sure which land I want to play yet. Um, I'm not expecting days from my opponent's deck, so I am going to go ahead and just cast an Innocent Blood here. All right, cool. My opponent does not have counter spells. That's very good information to know. I think I'm going this route. Okay, sure. There's the fetch to clear. Another Stoneforge would be annoying. There it is. I don't have an Edict right now. 
The Cauldra doesn't get answered super well by the things my opponent's doing. They also just have a bunch of basics. Not the best spot for me. We'll see what I can do. I'd like to take the, like, if possible, I'd like to take the initiative and then string a couple of one rings together. Sure, that's fine. All these basics are brutal. Okay, we are playing a Cauldra game. Alright, so I eat some initial points of damage. I make my token. I'm going to have some decisions to make regarding whether I'm making more tokens or whether or not I'm trying to do something with the one ring. I'm probably trying to do something with the one ring. I'm probably trying to find something that takes Cauldra out of play, which means floating the mana here. I think I am going to need more mana. I'll discard a Wasteland here. Um, I need to leave a black mana up. So that if I draw Thoughtseize off the one ring, I can take Trailblazer's Torch. That probably means playing this land drop. Put a long pause on that one. Yep. All right, it's in play. I get protection from everything for a turn. Get to draw a card. Did not draw the Thoughtseize. But I get to do some chip damage here. And then hopefully find a way to answer Cauldra slash the initiative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opponent grabbed planes. Prismatic ending my token so they can hold the initiative. Seems good. I go down a life. Life from alone for a new Urza Saga is medium. I would prefer not to use my mana for that sort of thing. Seems like my opponent has surgical extraction. They've paused in my draw step for no reason. Yep. Uh, can't really do anything about that. That occurs. It's now exceptionally hard for me to actually kill my opponent. Like, Grist tokens are the primary way that that happens at this point. Uh, yep. You know, it was a possibility with the black there. Have to just do it, though. So I draw two, they get to ping me two more times. Um, with my opponent having the initiative and Cauldra and Bowmasters all, uh, I am comfortable conceding here. So much for the trophy run with Pox. Right, we are playing against a Yorian deck of some kind this round. Um, this is just an Urza Saga game. I'm not wastelanding my opponent this game, at least early on. It's just funneling mana into Urza Saga, as like very clearly become the plan based on this keep. Pretty soft to do a prismatic ending on this. Nope, we're just on some multicolor pile. Um, so, do I want to Bosage you that land? I guess let's, f or no, this is a, a basic land type. No, this is a basic land type, right? Yeah, so let's not do that. Don't have the mana to cast that as of right now. I think I'm going to put extra lands into the graveyard in case I rip a life from the loam in the not-too-distant future. And we'll call this good. Okay, my opponent's got a land drop, but no active things to play. Uh, potentially no removal spell if they're not willing to attack in there. So that's nice for me. Uh, Grist is a reasonable draw. So there's fetching just to not get got by Pithing Needle. If I get a Mox Diamond, I can cast a Thoughtseize, which I think I'm down with. Now let's get rid of both Seiju. But play a new Urza Saga. I think I go ahead and cast this now. If, I have, if my opponent has a Lightning Bolt, I would like to know about it before I attack. Force of Negation. Alright, so I guess we'll go ahead and send in. Uh, I lose this Construct token in combat some portion of the time. Not this time, though. So we're looking to dodge something like a Dress Down. Okay, my opponent went into the tank for a little while and then ultimately just ended up conceding. I don't know exactly what my opponent is doing, like in terms of a deck list, but they are probably four to five color value pile. I'm going to assume that these four cards coming in is probably a good idea to have more outs to something like a Merktide Regent. I don't know exactly how aggressive my opponent is for like, how much does the damage from Thoughtseize matter? Like, the more controlling they are, the more I might want something like him to Turok. Ghost Quarter might be Wasteland. I think in the absence of information, I'm going to get rid of 
thought seizes, play some more on board stuff and see how I feel about this long term. It's possible I still want Thoughtseize, so then not quite as glutted at the CMC2 slot. Um, this game can just start like last game where I attempt to play an early Urza saga. I have limited ability to pivot in my plan, but hopefully Urza saga is just good versus what my opponent is doing. I think I play Mox Diamond prior to making the land drop. If this is just going to get spell pierced, I don't want to have committed Urza Saga already. Oh, yeah, see, there we go. Do I go squirter my opponent? Like, is this Wasteland? I am going to hope that this is Wasteland. It is not Wasteland. Okay, this is fine. Like, knocking my opponent off of a color may still be perfectly valuable. And I can play this game on basics for quite some time. That was Yori into hand. Let's, I guess, fetch around a stifle here. And have a couple of different spells slash spell adjacent friends available for my opponent's turn. Alright, we are seeing a four drop. Or maybe just needed black mana. Uh, Merktide region is totally fine. I will just sudden... Oh, uh, maybe I Assassin's Trophy that. Like, would my opponent force to protect that? Um, this is kind of my answer to Planeswalkers right now, though. All right. It worked. That's great. That's just me a basic swamp. I think I'm interested in playing Grist first over Lily. Like, I'm happy enough with the cards that are in my hand. Days. All right, so that land comes back. Painful truths. That's a blast from the past. Makes my Lily a lot less exciting. I could Boseju Wasteland and then play Urza Saga. A little bit of a clunky play. I think I'm not going to go that route. I think I'm going to see if my opponent will Wasteland this. And just discard this Mox Diamond. Alright, Lily's in play. I'll junk Mox Diamond. And my opponent has junked a daze. Alright, cantrip time for my opponent. Um something like a lightning bolt plus orcish bowmasters could kill Liliana. I could fetch and clear off that ponder. Okay, there's Orcish Bowmasters. Yep. And there's the lightning bolt to clear. My opponent also did not use Wasteland, which is annoying for me. I think I am forced to play out Urza Saga now. I just kind of hope to draw a life from the loam a little bit later on in this game. I wanted to be able to play around both a Spell Pierce and a Daze. Alright, we are getting the Brainstorm to hide the good cards instead, so now I'm not going to have a chance at hitting my opponent's Yorian. Him hits Force of Will and Flooded Strand, which is not very good at this stage of the game if I'm being honest. Okay, I lose the Urza Saga. Oh, we are on all sorts of greed here. So my opponent becomes the Monarch. While having four creatures in play, I don't think I beat that. I can take out any one of these, but I don't think I have a realistic path forward to beat the Monarch here. Like Monarch and Initiative are something that I very much have trouble with. Plague Engineer becomes a little bit more reasonable against Orcish Bowmasters. My discard becomes worse against things like Painful Truth. Discard also doesn't take Wasteland, which my opponent is somehow fitting into that mana base. Maybe it's like a one of. I'm going to cut my Pithing Needle and sub it for a Plague Engineer. I don't know that I want to go up on like too many creatures because like I am still a small pox deck at the end of the day, but this seems okay. It's possible I want Bantu's Last Reckoning to help deal with 4th Aorlingas. This is one mana short of being a very good hand. This is uh, unkeepable. The 5 card hand has one mana as well. Um, do I risk spiking a land and keep a 5 card hand? If I spike any land, I go Mox Diamond, discard the land, life from the loam, get the land back. And I'm in okay shape. 
But I think like a two land hand with a life from the loam is better on four than this. One, two. This doesn't win a game of magic against my opponent's value pile. I think it's life from the loam or Urza Saga or bust here. I'm going to go to three. Lock. All right. I don't think I am set up well to win a game of magic here. I'm going to concede this one very quickly, but I'll play it out for a couple of terms. Like, Life from the Loam is basically the only thing that saves this hand. Like, I am quite confident about that. I don't know that one Urza Saga ripped off the top, for example, is good enough from here. It is insane that my opponent has Island in this spot. I've played out this land, so I can still do a black black spell while wastelanding next turn. Alright, new bobble from my opponent. Uh, no second land drop. Okay, sure. Alright, I mean, I guess we can draw a small pox, take my opponent off of all of their lands. Um, that's not bad. Opponent does currently have eight cards in hand. I don't expect this to resolve. Yep. So the island comes back. My opponent has Delver. Sure. Um, I am going to fetch and thin uh, land out of my deck. And continue to operate on a decent number of basics. Alright, Delver flips to Ponder. And now my opponent can find their next land drop. I had a really good window to uh, like do something that impacted the game meaningfully, but the mold of four was brutal. I expect at this point, with my opponent on seven cards now, I don't win anymore. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's a start. So let's Wasteland. Take out Volcanic Island. Lily. Edict one of the two. But this isn't really good enough. Like, the Lily gets attacked by the other one. And then, like... My opponent is ahead on board with six-ish cards in hand after they play their land drop for the turn. Sure. Bobble comes in. It's more redraws, but I don't know. Maybe my opponent misses another land drop. I lose Lily. Yeah, my opponent misses another land drop. All right. This doesn't actually do anything, though, until I find an Urza Saga, at which point it's good. But I probably can't actually go and dredge that because I need to find an answer to this Delver before it kills me. Like, I can attempt to keep my opponent from putting... And I'm gonna just do this mid-combat here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so now my edicts are bad. I go to 11. Need to take draws here. Hit an Urza Saga, which I also would have hit if I dredged. But my opponent has five damage on board. And that, like, my Urza Saga does not outpace that. Sure. Alright, my opponent's got another land drop now. And another creature on board. I take five and I'm dead next turn. I wish I had a Bantus that I was drawing towards. But I didn't see the things like Delver until this game. Uh, and I whiff on my drop here. I take six in the air no matter what I do. I am dead. Um, yeah, we had no ability to uh, punish my, oppo my opponents. Maybe I can't say a bad keep because like, they have a land and a bunch of redraws, but we couldn't punish it. All right, uh, final round here. We're two and two. I have a medium power level opening hand. That has Life from the Loam plus Wasteland, which is probably going to cause me to keep it. Be a little awkward here in some capacities, and I would like to draw another land to give myself more flexibility. Or we could just die. Alright, good game. My opponent. Oh, um... Do I beat that? I wonder if I beat that just by Wastelanding my opponent. Let's find out. This like does not line up favorably with the one ring over time. Like my opponent will find more mana, but like there's sometimes where they 
fuck yeah, where this exact thing happens. So, if my opponent blood moons me, which basic do I want? Green? But I also kind of want to smallpox my opponent's land. So that probably means the black one. I could also just ignore Blood Moon and Magus of the Moon and fetch a Bayou, which gives me a little bit more flexibility. I am going to do that. So we'll currency converter. I'll plan on smallpoxing next turn if my opponent plays a land. They're down to 15. All right, there's a city. Uh, key is scary. Key untaps the one ring for a whole bunch more draws this turn. My opponent may combo off through my land destruction here. Okay, so that gives him another untap of the one ring. Uh, so this is going to get pretty silly. Oh, they're passing the turn. That could have been much worse for me. All right, so there's an Emrakul. They shuffled all their stuff back in. So it, it, it's smallpox. I just try to keep them from playing another of the one ring and kill them with their own card. All right. This is a very silly plan. Do we discard life from the loam to dredge it? No. I'm going to discard a retrofitter foundry. Like, that. that card is just not really relevant this game. Sacrifice Urborg. Yes, and now I've put a 2-2 creature under this, which may end up mattering. Like, that may be the difference between my opponent having an extra turn and not, depending on how many times they tap and untap the one ring this turn. All right, third soul land of the game. Sure, this represents a lot of mana. Fence grid is fine. I don't even know that that's worth using the mana on. All right, they're doing a couple of untaps for Assault Monolith purposes. Paradox Engine is terrifying. Uh, I am going to always yield to that. I imagine that I am now dead. Going to always yield to those. So my opponent has made a whole bunch of mana and drawn a bunch of cards with the One Ring. I think at this point I'm going to update you as important things happen, otherwise this turn's going to be pretty boring. So my opponent has made a new copy of the One Ring. They've missed making about 30 mana. They're playing a little sloppy. I mean, a lot sloppy, honestly. It might not matter. So my opponent has cast an Emrakul. They currently have no cards in their library. Alright, I have to respond to that by making my 2-2. And we'll see if my opponent accidentally kills themselves. Like if they get lazy and just pass the turn, I die. There is a lethal-sized walking ballista, and that will kill me. All right, so this is going to be a very tough matchup. I don't have anything like Collector Oof to just fully shut down artifacts, so I need to stop my opponent's initial mana sources at pretty much any cost. I think I am in for discard spell into surgical extraction on something like the One Ring or Karn. I am interested in Mind Break Trap. Probably need these. Inquisition misses some important stuff. I might end up playing it. Uh, no, 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 no. From here it gets a little tougher. Probably go down one grist. I probably need some non Urza Saga win conditions. And by that I mean exactly one, but kind of whatever. This misses some important stuff. I'm actually going to board out both grists. I'm having trouble with cuts. Am I cutting the one ring here? I think I need it. I can't think of anything else to cut. All right, what does this hand do? This hand can thought seize my opponent and be awkward from there. It is very good if I find... It's going to be very bad against Karn. Double Mox Diamond Smallpox is super cute. All right, I think this has a real shot at winning. Uh, it will need help. It will 100% need help. All right, here we go. 
and discard Urza Saga here. I thought he's my opponent. They're going to play a turn one Urza Saga that I am going to get rid of. I'm going to get rid of Paradox Engine here. I'll go ahead and Mox Diamond, discard this land, and play Currency Converter to just set myself up for a very good turn two Smallpox situation. Okay, they are not immediately playing out Urza Saga. Does that mean I just Ghost Quarter this land? This is just a little bit of an awkward draw. I think that means I'm just Ghost Quartering that land. Yeah, I'll discard an Urborg. That's fine. Ghost Quarter, blow up Crystal Vein. And then I just hope to dodge a 4-drop that my opponent has naturally drawn and then blow up Urza Saga. Uh, yeah, this is great. So I Smallpox. Exile my card to Currency Converter. Pass the turn. I can make a 2-2. Two -two. And we just fully have to hope that my opponent doesn't draw one of their 4-drops. Damn it. Like, I would prefer it to be that one over the one ring, honestly. Like, this misses much more often than the one ring does. Alright, so we'll do this. Return Shouldred's Edict to make a 2-2. Two -two. I've got my own Urza Saga. Go ahead and attack my opponent. And we'll call that good. End of turn, I will probably just go ahead and make a treasure to make my Urza Saga token bigger. I need to kill my opponent before they find a mana source. Um, that's fine. Sure. That life gain is legitimately annoying. So this clears the top two cards of their library. All right. I'll make my treasure token. I'm thinking about whether I'm playing or holding this land. I need to make the Urza Saga token, and then I need to make the Urza Saga token the following turn, too. So I think my mana is spoken for. I'll hit my opponent down to 9. They go back to 10. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 artifacts easily. Um, that's horrifying. So that gives my opponent the mana that they need. I'm just going to yield to these. Uh, that's unfortunate. I even took one of those early in the game, too. My opponent has just cast a copy of the One Ring, which I assume means that I am going to die with all of these possible untaps. However, my opponent is dead on board if they mess up somewhere, so I have to sit here for five minutes while they play eggs. Okay, they have found an Emrakul. I think I will just concede to that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm fine conceding that. Like, I go to two, but that is going to beat me. I am okay with that. GG's. All right, so we have reached the end of the league with a 2-3 finish. I don't think we're keeping up with the power creep of Legacy in playing Pox, and, like, that's been true for the past 10 years. So, like, that's not anything new. But the gap between Pox decks and everything else, like, continues to just increase, 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 increase. And, like, I've put up some 5-0s with Pox. Like, I've gotten trophies with it. But, like, you are fighting an uphill battle when you choose to play something like this. And if you ask me what deck am I good against, I have trouble answering that question, right? Which is probably an indicator that, like, you shouldn't play something like this unless you are doing it for pure enjoyment, in which case, knock yourself out. Like, by all means, do that. Um, but, like, we lost games to our opponents just having basic lands that I couldn't wasteland. Um, we lost games to, I think, Orcish Bowmaster in multiple capacities, just picking off Liliana the Veil, like I talked about in the intro. Uh, and the deck just doesn't have enough win conditions. And I don't think you win the game fast enough that you can build this as a, like, the one ring deck because the idea of slowly grinding away all of your opponent's resources is innately opposed to use the one ring to have a good, like, three-ish turn cycle loop where you take over the game. Like, Urza Saga is the only thing that I can do that just takes over the game and ends game quickly. 
and it's hard for me to remember exactly, but I imagine that Urza Saga was the thing that won us most of our games here, uh, more so than anything else. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think, and remember, if you need any of these cards for your Paper Magic events, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. Folks, I hope you all have a great rest of the day. See ya!